So Yosef, he was the father's most favored son. We could see that in the Torah, right? The first five books of the Bible written by Moses or Moshe. And that's what we see. He was the father's most favored son. What else? He was despised and rejected by his own. Remember, his brothers hated him for his dreams. They hated him even more. They were jealous of him. And they despised and they rejected him. Just like the Israel, for the most part, rejected Jesus. And then Yosef also, they conspired to murder him. His brothers saw him coming from far away and they conspired to murder him, to kill him. He was sold for pieces of silver, right, by Judah. Judah came up with that plan, and that's where we get the name Judas. It derives from the name Judah. Wow. He was handed over to the Gentiles. Remember that? Yosef was sold for silver and handed over to the Gentiles by his own brothers. And then later, he was falsely accused, right, by that Potiphar type. That, or excuse me, that Pontius Pilate type named Potiphar. And then he was sent to the place of the condemned, which is a picture of the cross. Remember, he was down in that prison, down in the pit again, but this time it was a dungeon. And what happens down there? He tells the two down there, the fate of the two condemned with him. One of them, what, lives and is restored to the king in three days. The other one is cursed to death. Picture of the cross. Then later, what? He was raised up out of that place of the condemned. Joseph was raised up and he was brought before the what? The throne before he who sat on the throne. And that's what we see. And Joseph was standing before him, raised up out of that place of the condemned. And he was the only one found worthy to reveal God's plan. Just like Jesus was the only one found worthy in Revelation chapter 5, And John wept because no one could take the scrolls out of the right hand of he who sat on the throne. But the elder in heaven said to John, don't weep. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah has been found worthy. And John said he saw a lamb as though he had been slain. And it was Jesus. And he was worthy to take the scrolls out of he who sat on the throne, out of his right hand. Only he. So what does that speak of? The same thing in Joseph's story. He was the only one found who could reveal God's future plan through those dreams. He was made the right-hand man to the power. Jesus is at the right hand of the power. Remember, he told Caiaphas, the high priest, that. And Caiaphas tore his clothes and and said, yelled out blasphemy. Here's a ring that perhaps he even wore, but this is an actual signet ring from ancient Egypt right there. He was given... His Gentile bride, he who sat on the throne did what? Gave him his Gentile bride. Asenath was her name. Isn't that amazing? Because right now, for the most part, Jesus, Yeshua, has a Gentile bride. But that's about to change because he's going to save all of Israel. He has a great harvest. So there's a great, great harvest. And when that last piece of grain was brought into the storehouses of Joseph, what happens? There was a great harvest seven-year time of great trouble, the great famine that was all over the face of the entire earth, which speaks of what? The seven-year tribulation period that's yet to come that Daniel spoke about and that Revelation, the book of Revelation speaks about. So his brothers during that time come to him and they're bowed down in fulfillment of Joseph's prophetic dreams. Just like Jesus told Caiaphas, you will see me at the right hand of the power coming in great glory. And and that's what we see here. His brothers did come back in fulfillment of that dream, bow down to him during that what? Time of great trouble. Seven-year time of great trouble. So he reveals to them that he's alive. He's alive. They were stunned. They were shocked. And they were scared. But he told them, don't be afraid. Come closer. I am Joseph. You guys meant it for evil, but God meant it for good to save you, to save many people alive as it is this day. So he saves all of Israel. He saves all of Israel. And it happened during that seven-year time of great trouble. Then what does he do? He grafts his new family, his Gentile bride and his two sons, 
into his old family as one family forever and ever. And this speaks of the millennial reign of the Messiah, the, of Jesus Christ, the thousand year reign. And they live in the best of the land together, right? That's, that's what Joseph provided for them, the best, the best of the land. And here, I love this scripture in Genesis 45, and they told him who? Jacob. They told Israel, Jacob, saying, Joseph's still alive. And he began to live again after that, right? He even said that. He was, he was alive. Joseph was alive, and then so was Israel. Israel became alive too. So the next episode, the next uh, parts and series that we're going to get into in this whole thing of Jesus, how to find Jesus in the Old Testament is going to be Moses and Jesus, how he compares, how he is a type and a picture of Jesus. And I'm so excited about that, you guys. I can't wait. So looking forward to it, guys. We're going to be looking at Moshe, or that's Hebrew for Moses. And it's I'm super excited because check this out. He there was, there was an evil king that did not know Joseph, it says in the scriptures in, in Exodus. And he wanted to kill all of the Hebrew baby boys in that region. Who does that remind you of? Oh, yeah, that's right. Herod, right? And then later, he's rejected by his own. He humbled himself, went to his own, and even killed a person to try and save some of them. Uh, from Because the taskmaster was whipping his Hebrew people very hard. But then they rejected him. And they said, who made you prince and king over us? And what did he do? He left and he went to the Gentile land and he shepherded the Gentile flock for a long time. But God calls him back to do what? To save Israel during a great time of trouble. And many of those plagues that we're going to see in Moses' story are the same ones that you see in the book of Revelation. So it's very powerful. So don't forget, hit this playlist right here. Click on this. This is how to find Jesus in the Old Testament. You can go back and watch any of the episodes. And you also want to hit that subscribe button and the bell. And you won't miss anything, my friend.